Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. Today's video is all about creating our reality. And I'm going to start by sharing with you a concept that's just fascinated me. And it's the concept that we don't know what we don't know, which seems obvious, but we can't experience something that we don't have knowledge of in our minds or language to make sense of something. Our brain filters things out that don't make sense. So sometimes something might be in our reality, but we just don't see it. Um, which is a very tricky thing to try and share with people because how do you explain something that they will never have noticed? So I'm going to try and do my best. So there's a few examples I want to share with you. The first is of a trip that a gentleman by the name of Rudolf Steiner, who started a philosophical education system, um, he went to Australia many years ago, round about the time that the camera was invented, and he travelled deep into the Australian outback and he met with a tribe of Aboriginals and he showed them a picture of the chief. I think he'd obviously taken a photograph of him and he showed him the picture. Now the question that I was asked when I was first shared this story with was what did the chief see? And I just want you to think about that for a moment before I give you the answer because it's really interesting and People have come up with dots on a piece of paper, he saw shapes and whatever else. But the truth of it is, he saw nothing. Because he did not have the language or the understanding or the concepts to even grasp a picture on a piece of paper. So for him there just wasn't anything there. However, once they explained to him the process and what it actually was, he could then see the picture. There's another story of a lady from China traveling to America and wherever she was in China I imagine it was fairly rural she'd never seen anybody with red hair and apparently for months after she arrived in America she just didn't even notice that people had different hair colors and it took a while for after somebody explained it to her for her to be able to see it. There's also the well-documented story and I don't know how true it is of the first ships arriving in America and the indigenous people not being able to recognize them or see them um, and actually just thinking that they were clouds because they didn't again have any language for these massive ships that had just arrived. Now these are all concepts and stories of other people so when I started learning about this um, that's what I was sort of thinking about but then I had my own experience. So a friend of mine started talking to me so I was in my office and um, we had a phone conversation and this friend of mine was telling me about an integrated bumper and how he wanted to get one put on his car and the pros and the cons and was asking me about it. And I said, I don't think I've ever seen an integrated bumper. So he sent me through a picture of what one actually looked like. Um, and again, I said, I don't think I've ever seen one. These must be quite a rare thing. Um, and at the time I was living in Africa where most people who <laughs> have big 4 by 4s have bumpers on them. No sooner had I sort of finished the conversation and whatever happened and I drove out into town, and I suddenly saw them everywhere. Um, and that was my own personal experience of not being able to language or not being able to understand something that I'd never experienced before. I'm sharing this with you because the opposite is also true. So where we can't experience something that we don't have the concepts for in our mind, we also experience everything that we do have concepts for. So whatever information you've absorbed throughout your life, from your childhood, through your infant, sorry, from your infancy, through your childhood, into your teenage years and into adulthood, be it from society, your caregivers, parents, your schooling, your culture, um, from what you've read, from what you've experienced personally, from what you've seen, all of that goes to build this database in your mind that gives you constructs for what you think reality is all about. These are the stories that you've told yourself to make sense of your world and to be able to survive in it and live in it. It'll also give you what you think is possible in life and what you think is not. Now, just because you think it's possible or you don't think it's possible does not make it so. Um, as I hope I've demonstrated with the previous examples about the ships and the hair colour and so on. 
Just because you believe something is possible, as I've said, does not make it so. So where in your life are you limiting yourself and limiting the possibilities that you could possibly have in life? I want to show another example of a gentleman by the name of Sir Roger Bannister. Now, years ago, people had never run the, run the mile in less than four minutes. And it was something that was a massive challenge. And Sir Roger Bannister decided that he was going to take the challenge on and he was going to be the person to run um, the mile in less than four minutes. And it's something that he actually achieved. But the thing that I find really fascinating is not that he achieved it, but that after he achieved it, only two months later, someone else did it as well. It was almost like it took him to push that barrier back, to make it a possibility for other people. Nowadays, for any self-respecting professional middle distance runner, doing the mile in under four minutes is something that is common practice. It has gone from something that is impossible to being something that is considered to be normal. Well, normal for people who do it as a profession, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> Now, the reason I'm sharing all of this is because I want to ask you, where in your life have you decided that something is not possible, that something cannot be done, that there's a reason you can't achieve something or experience something or have something in your life? Now, what I'd really love you to do as an exercise following on from this video is to go and find people that have done it. And if you've placed a limitation on yourself, um, for instance, I'm dyslexic, so um, I could limit all sorts of things <laughs> by giving myself that excuse, but I choose not to. I would then go out and I'd look for people who are dyslexic that had done things and achieved things that I have limited myself on. To give myself examples, to convince myself that actually things are possible. And that's really my, my exercise that I'm setting you today, is to look for the limitations you've set yourself. Look for the conditions you've placed on yourself as a person for those limitations. Um, for instance, you're female, or that you're of a certain age, or that you are of a certain education. To go and find people that have broken those limitations, who have surpassed them and moved beyond them, and to use them to help you move beyond them too. I've really enjoyed my time with you here today. And if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and like and share because that helps me to grow the audience and to give more value to more people. I've also created a free course, um, which is five steps to self-awareness, towards self-awareness. And I'll put a link to that down below as well. And if you want any more resources, you can always find them on my website. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.